Crokinole skills tip number 10. If you've been following along with the last couple of tips, numbers eight and nine, you probably noticed that the tips have been fairly advanced. Well, the good news is that this week's tip is going to be a little simpler. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to call it a beginner tip because this is something you're going to want to keep in mind no matter how good you get at the incredible game of Crokinole. This is all about checking your different options and angles and deciding which one is going to serve you best. And you also want to think about what to consider before you make your choice. Let's take a look. My name is Jeremy Tracy of Crokinole Game Boards. If you find this video helpful and enjoyable, please give us a like, a comment, a share, subscribe. It all helps to build our channel, and more importantly, it helps build awareness of the incredible game of Crokinole. Have you ever seen someone playing Crokinole and you watch them make a shot that's way more difficult than it needs to be? For example, if you've been practicing tips eight and nine, you've probably gotten a lot better at shooting Hogan's Alley, and that's fantastic, but the shadow side of that is that you may fall into the trap of making that tough Hogan's Alley shot even when you don't need to. Now don't get me wrong, if you really like a challenge and you wanna go for that tougher shot, by all means, be my guest and fire away. But if you're a competitive person and you're in it to win it, then I'd highly recommend that you stop to consider all your options before deciding which shot is best for you. So let's say you're looking at a shot like this. You may say to yourself, ah crap, I gotta shoot through Hogan's Alley, when really all you have to do is go to the side and shoot around the pegs instead of shooting through them. Or maybe there's simply an easier path for you to find your way through the pegs. What you want to ask yourself is what is the easiest and widest path through the pegs to you hit your opponent's button. And here is one that we see a lot. Someone will shoot their shot way too close to the pegs when all they really need to do is move over to the side where they've got a much easier path and a much higher chance of success. What we are suggesting is that you just take an extra second before you shoot to decide which option is going to be the best for you. A lot of times that is the difference between the good crokinole players and the great crokinole players is what they're able to see on the board in front of them. The same thing applies when you have an opponent's button somewhere within that 15 circle. But I want you to consider two things in that case. The first thing I want you to consider is what is the easiest path that's going to get your button from the shooting line in to make contact with the opponent's button. But the second thing I want you to think about is how is your opponent's button going to travel from where it sits and head out outside of the pegs and ideally all the way into the gutter. For example, there are times when you look at a shot like this and your easiest path from the shooting line to that opponent's button may be through here because this is a wider opening between those pegs. But if you look at it, the likely thing that's going to happen is you're going to drive your opponent's button straight into the peg. You're not going to like the results. Instead, you want to come over here where it's not as easy a path to that button, but at least when you hit it, it's going to drive it out into the gutter on the far side. Now please keep in mind if you attend an NCA tournament, which I highly recommend, that the matches in those tournaments are timed, so you want to be respectful to your opponent and keep the match going. These time matches, you've definitely got enough time to play, I'm just saying that you don't have 30 to 40 seconds on every shot to have a big debate with yourself. So I guess the take home message is to take your time, but do it quickly. Can we make up some Canadian or Crokinole proverbs? I mean, there's Japanese proverbs and Chinese proverbs and African proverbs, so to me, it, it just seems appropriate that we have some Crokinole proverbs, right? So even when you're not playing in an official tournament with time matches, I'd still encourage you to keep this in mind because one of the things people tell us over and over again that they absolutely love about the great game of Crokinole is how fast moving it is. Even when you're playing doubles, it isn't very long between your turns. So make sure you keep it fast and fun. There's your tip for this week, also known as your first ever Crokinole proverb. Take your time, but do it quickly. And as always, have fun playing the greatest game on earth. You're not allowed to put my girlish giggle in the video, not even in the bloopers. To the ha ba 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 ba. Yep, you distracted me. Rolling again? Oh. Ah,
Check out my line.